What's up guys, welcome back to Technique Tuesday. Glad you guys are here coming to party with us today. We're gonna to be doing day two on how, actually just cage defense. How to defend against somebody controlling you up against the wall. Last week, we worked on preventing somebody pinning you up against the wall. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what if somebody gets you there, what's the next step? And oftentimes, professional fighters, they bring in specialists who can really pressure them in ways that they're not used to being pressured. Exactly. Steven has to worry about getting his movement cut off and getting pressed against the cage, so he brings in somebody that can just apply that pressure the man. and really control him up against the cage. He's, he's, he's the control master. Oh, see, I can't even move right now. What the heck? I'm barely trying. <laughs> what up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? As you guys can tell, I got my man Sensei Seth in the house and my man Icy Mike. We actually had some really cool collaborations this weekend, man. I recommend you guys go checking them out, hitting them with some subscribes. Go give them a follow. Uh, these guys have been great. And I got, I got a karate practitioner, you know, here and also a street defense practitioner. The dirtiest of the dirty dirtiest boxers. The dirtiest of dirty boxers. <laughs> We're gonna be working a, a wrestling video. <laughs> so let's get after it, y'all. Now, last week we talked about preventing somebody getting you to the cage. There's many, many different things that you guys can do. A lot of different rabbit holes that you guys can go down. I'm keeping it fairly basic for you guys. Something that you guys can pick up pretty easy and work on it at home or in the gym. Now, let's say I have my man Sensei Seth in the house. The first thing they wanna do is get, usually use their hips and their shoulders involved and sometimes their head, right? The head is so brutal and super crucial for this guy to get a good takedown and control. Because what he wants to do is straighten me out. He wants, to, he wants to stand me up by using his head, driving it into the bottom of, my, bottom of my chin. Yes, trying to stand me up. I can't let that happen. So first things first, whatever side his face is on, I want to turn that direction. I do not want to be turning the opposite way because that makes it easy for him to drop for a double leg. Once he gets locked up under my booty, I'm going down, especially when you got a booty like myself. Uh, it's like a handle, they're gonna pick you up and slam you. <laughs> so I wanna, don't laugh at my booty, since I said. <laughs> so I wanna turn towards his face, like so. That's number one. I never want both butt cheeks up against the cage at all times. Now I know people do different stuff, like I fight with my hands down, all right? Some people do this differently. This is what works for me. I'd sidekick from here. He was, you would sidekick from here, this close? Yeah. <laughs> but no, he's got an underhook here, so what I wanna do, I wanna get a good wizard or overhook in, okay? This is gonna prevent him from dropping for a double leg. So if he drops down, I've got the overhook preventing him from doing that. Number two is I wanna turn my shoulders, because right now, all of his energy is going into me. I want his energy to go a different direction. So I use this wizard and turning my body to get his energy offline. So now, his energy, you see him move there? His energy is going this direction. So now I can breathe. Now from here, I like to keep my feet fairly close to the cage. That prevents my opponent from dropping down and grabbing a leg. They all, they love this. I actually press my calf up against the cage. So it makes it hard for him to do that. If I'm out here, it's easier for him to slide that foot out, down I go. So here, he tries to drop down and grab my, maybe a leg. Cause he can't use this one, I got the overhook. Now it's my time to get wrist control. I come down, I grab the wrist, and I pull the wrist up. I like, I like going here, but you gotta be careful. Sometimes you can pull their hands up and do a body lock like so. I do not want that. So as I pull this hand up, I like to pass it off to my other hand. It's gonna be fairly easy for him to get this out, but that's okay. I wanna kinda slow do him know, down. So do I, you know how you do that? How do you do that? You break the wrist, walk away. Break the wrist and walk away. <laughs> so I pass it off into the other hand, right? So now I've got both arms locked up. Now he's eventually gonna get this arm out, but this gives me time to actually get his head offline, just like so. So now I've got a head control here, okay? Now once I get a control of his head, it's very, very difficult for him to do anything at this point. Now sometimes I'll push, and then sometimes I'll actually slide to kind of like a frame here, like so. Makes it easier for me to kind of get my butt off of the wall. Now if you notice, my back is up against the wall at this point. I'm actually leaning into my opponent, right? Pressuring into him. If this is a feel thing, so I kind of feel where his pressure is going, mm -hmm. okay? Sometimes a guy will try and use this arm here 
maybe he'll circle around to the back side, which means I've got no, I've got no pressure here. So I'll back out this direction. Sometimes you get a guy who's really looking for this front ankle, so they move around this direction. So I'll get my frame in and I'll back out this direction, like so. But then you guys, sometimes you got guys who compensate, right? So if I'm here, and let's say I'm trying to move this direction, he'll move. So I move the other direction, right? And eventually, I can work my way out. It's kind of like a back and forth windshield wiper effect, okay? Eventually that hole opens up and allows me to escape. Gotcha. What do you think? I think it's what people, when people see this stuff, they think I would just do this, right. and then I'm off. And it's, it's a it's fight, like, you might try this, it might not work. They might try that. It might not work. You have exactly. to keep fighting no matter which you way they go. You have to keep fighting. So it, it, it is a fight here, right? And your opponent may do something different. May, he may drop straight for the legs. He may drop straight, which means I got to react to that. See how I lower my stance? I've got to react. And why do I spread my feet apart, do you know? So it's harder to get around. I can't link my hands behind you. I can't link my hands your behind you. Your butt is so small, but it's like nothing there. Like, hey, you have my butt alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's his handle. Yeah, that's my handle. So if he drops down, I gotta lower my weight as well and, and spread my feet apart. I still add this, this overhook. This overhook is very important, okay? But you can kind of feel, I'm kind of leaning into you a little bit. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives you a little pressure here. Right. You see what I'm saying? And here is when I'm trying to use my whizzer and try and get, a, a, get, get control of your head. And that's whizzer, not wizard. wizard. What in Gaudium Leviosa? You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> you just be like, get your wizard. Get your wizard in, man. <laughs> now, actually, there is a difference between an overhook and a wizard. Did you know this? So, overhook is when I've got, when I'm in deep, like so. A wizard is when I'm actually just grabbing the armpit with my hand. Oh. And I usually use this, actually, if you've got a single leg here, right? I'll use a wizard, like oh. so. Because if you've got a single leg and yeah. I go for a deep underhook, clamp down on my elbow, yes, now down oh. I go. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a wizard is where I'm just cupping the armpit. I'm preventing this guy from really clamping down. Yeah, and it allows me to kind of lean. Hang this over is top a, a little bit. Right. Yeah. I'm almost yeah, like I'm yeah. grabbing the peck. Yeah. Grabbing that peck right there. So I don't know if you guys knew that. There's a difference between overhook and a wizard. I don't know a lot though, to be fair. So. <laughs> <laughs> came to, so I'll relate with them. You came on Wonder Boy's channel and learned some wrestling. Learned some wrestling, baby. So a little recap. They get you. The, they get you the cage. First thing I want to do is turn which direction towards the head, towards his face, right? So I'll always turn towards the face. I spread my feet apart, I get my feet nice and tight up against the fence. I got my overhook, preventing him from dropping down, grabbing the legs. Yeah, now I got him. Two, I gotta get this hand free. So either I can pass it off, or wait for him to drop down, drop down for the leg. Now I can get wrist control and pass it off to this hand here. Once I go, once I get to this position here, I wizard, and I get my head, my hand under his head, on his head. Not his neck, he's strong here, he can fight through that. It's gotta be the top of the head, the weakest part. All right, now I can push here, or I can frame up that, like wait, so. Wait, wait, there are no weak parts of my head. <laughs> no, not this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I push. Now I find my way out. I kinda move back and forth. I move this way, he compensates. I move back the other way. I keep going until I'm free. And even when you back out, don't back out up against the fence. You gotta cut a tight corner to put your opponent up against the fence. There you have it, guys. Next week, we're gonna be talking about what happens if your opponent gets you to the ground, how you wanna get back up. Appreciate you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Go follow these guys. Catch y'all later. I see my didn't realize you were that strong.